Hello, in this episode, we're gonna be focusing on how to handle late rent payments. We've got a 28 day process, something that we use ourselves within our business, and we're gonna break it down for you step by step. How to deal with uh, late tenant payments professionally in a structured way that means that more often than not, you're gonna get paid. Let's get into it. Okay, so rental arrears. It's something that is at the forefront of a landlord's mind. If you ask any landlord, what do you fear? Uh, two things are mm -hmm. said straight away. One is my tenant not paying the rent and the second one, them trashing the house. So today we're yeah. gonna cover one of the big two. Um, I, I can tell you from personal experience that if you follow the process we're going to outline in this video, you will have significantly decreased arrears. I can tell you that with confidence because a long time ago, I used to have high arrears. When we enacted this process, and it's been refined over um, 10, years you know, 10 years or more, <clears throat> and it wasn't me who enacted it, it was our lettings manager, um, but my arrears rate came down almost overnight. It took six months. Uh, so I went from crazy arrears, mm -hmm. right? Arrears is something that we track in our business across uh, the, the, the whole of the portfolio, obviously individually per property, but as a whole portfolio. Uh, you'll know the, be the stats better than you may because they're, mm -hmm. they're on the KPI sheets. But uh, I know that the average arrears in the industry, um, letting agencies will report between 5 and 7% arrears. That's yeah. our registered agents, actually, which we'd hope would be better. Higher standard. Ones, higher yeah. standard, yeah. Uh, we buy letting agencies and we sometimes lift the bonnet and see much higher rates than that. It's maybe 20% I've yeah. seen, you know, we've yeah, seen. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Our arrears rate, as reported it's every Thursday, one. is less, less than 1%. Less than 1%. Mm. It's, it's one of those ones where you, when you're working it out, it goes <coughs> to zero point something something and you think it gets a bit silly. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's under 1%. Um, so what we're about to talk about works. It's a process, um, 7 in 7. 21 in 21 is what we, we named it. Yep. So it's a 28 day process, seven days plus 21 days is 28 days. So you're going to cap your problem in uh, to under one calendar month. And more often than not, this works. So let's go, yeah. let's, let's go through the process. Okay, so step one, basically your tenant is late paying your rent. Mm -hmm. What do you do? What do you do? Yeah. Well, um, stepping back before step one, you've got to notice this. And that yeah. is actually Good step, point. So step one totally, is checking the bank every Totally day. seriously, yeah. Yeah. check the bank every day. If you're a landlord and you've got a couple of properties, then you know when the rent's due. Check mm -hmm. that day. The next day at nine o'clock is probably uh, realistic because um, if, if somebody's due to pay on the first and they haven't paid by five o'clock on the first, nobody in our business will call them. We'll call on the second mm -hmm. because they might pay when they get home from work at eight o'clock at night. Hopefully they're paying on direct debit and standing order and it'll come through at midnight. But if it's manual payments, and some are, our process kicks in on day day one of arrears, which is the next day. True. But you have, totally seriously, you have to be there and checking. As a landlord, way back when, that was my big, my first failing was I wasn't checking regularly enough. I'll check once a week. Oh, he hasn't paid his rent. Mm. Oh dear, I forgot to completely make a note of that new tenant's details and the date they were only paying. And I didn't check for a month and I missed sure. it for another month. If you don't call the tenant the very next day, you're, you're basically saying, I'm, I'm not, not really on the ball. If you call them a month later, like I was doing, and hopefully nobody watching this video and listening to this is, is gonna be in that position, then you're basically saying, I don't care, and I'm completely out of control. So check is number one. Uh, and then the seven day sequence. Yeah, so if it hasn't dropped on time, um, you need to make contact on the first day of arrears. And you, you might, if you're self-managing, have regular contact with the tenant, you know that, they best contacted via WhatsApp or something. So that would probably be the best first pers first method. Yep. Um, maybe it's phone call, maybe it's email, but you'll know. Um, you'll know the best point, way, way to contact Usually, firm but fair, straight away, that that is enough to shock the tenant into paying yep. there and then. Yeah. Um, if, if they're avoiding you, they're avoiding you, but contact them every mm -hmm. single day for the mm -hmm. first week. You, you need to get in, in so seven in seven means mm. seven contacts within seven days. So whether that's phone, text, whatever, whatever. Uh, the last contact is a knock at the door. So don't leave it longer than seven <coughs> days before you've checked that they are actually there. And do you know what? more often than not, they've just forgotten to pay it. Yep. Or they've paid it and put the wrong reference on. That happens, you know? So, so most most at this stage will be, will be um, 
uh, caught and, 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 and dealt with. Um, the ones that haven't paid by seven days, you know you've got an issue to deal with. And that's when the 21 in 21 ramps up. So, yep. um, step two, escalating the yeah. situation. Uh, so on the seventh day, um, we issue what's called a notice of intention. So it's a, a semi-formal, looks a little bit legal kind of document, looks a little bit like something a solicitor would send you, but it's come from us. And it says, our, our intention is, uh, if you don't pay your rent, uh, we are going to serve notice and, and evict. And that's, and that's the big one that really yeah. often works, because it, yeah. it can look a bit scary. It can, it can look a bit scary. Very serious. It, it gets, um, it's got serious very quickly. It's, uh, it's nicely worded, and um, it, it, you know, it starts off with, it might be a mistake, it might be an oversight, all those kind of things. And it is really important to keep your tenant on side throughout this. The worst thing you can do is go in too heavy handed and then your tenant cuts off communication. Mm. You want to keep <clears> talking, and the, they may get to a point where um, there's a negotiation that says, you know, I haven't got the money, I've lost my job, or something's happened. And there's very little, as a landlord, you can actually do about that there and then, in sure. that month, other than keep talking and working your way through the situation. You can't demand money that doesn't exist. Yeah. It just doesn't, yeah, doesn't yeah. work, we've learned that. Um, you know, we've, I've seen other, other processes similar to this that go in really heavy handed, really quickly, and then you just alienate your, your tenant. And that's not what you're looking to do. Mm -hmm. You're looking to get paid and work your way through it and keep a roof over their head as yeah, well. So, totally. um, yeah, if, if, if payment hasn't been received on the seventh day, it's time to escalate. Okay. Seven in seven. There is also something else you need to be wary of. Mm -hmm. Maybe, just maybe, they've left. Yeah. They've done a runner as the old fashion phrase. It happens. Um, so that's why in that first, at the end of that first week, you need to have um, put a knock on the door. You know, you can't go in. <clears throat> you can pretty much, maybe if you can see through the window. Do you want to reiterate that? Do you want to reach out? And by the time we get to the end of this process, <clears throat> we'll, we'll explain what, um, you know, we've very carefully designed this to be not harassment. Yeah. You, you cannot harass a tenant. They, they've got peaceful enjoyment and all those things. So you never want to be, uh, be accused of being too heavy handed and harassing somebody. Seven in seven, that's absolutely fine. So seven contacts in seven days, a knock on the door. <clears throat> uh, and this will mean that you've decided if they're, if they're a runner, if they're, they're, they're gone, which honestly, if they can't afford to pay the rent, that's, it's not yeah, ideal, yeah. but it's, it better, it's better than them staying and not paying the yeah. rent. So um, at least you've found out within seven days, not at the end of the month or a month later. So yeah. do go visit within the seventh day. Um, if they've done a runner, let's say, uh, there's another process you need to enact, which will be, um, putting a notice on the door. Ideally, you want to get hold of the tenant and get a, the keys back and get them to sign something that says they've surrendered the tenancy. Sure. Uh, do not go into the property um, and do not assume they've gone. Um, if they've cleared all their belonging, belongings out and it's definitely they've gone, then still try and get hold of them. Then maybe maybe wait some days. There's, like I said, there's another process and you probably need some legal advice on this. Don't get yourself into trouble. Yeah. Don't just go into the property. Right? No, but we're talking about arrears, not actually getting possession now, but a bit of a tangent, but it is worth noting. You yep. might end up speaking to the neighbours or <clears throat> they might have seen you there and they speak to the tenant. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to do it right. Got to do it right. Okay. So, um, on to step yeah. three or four. Next step. <laughs> step three. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's... What happens between the seventh day and the twenty eighth day? So with a, you said seven and seven, twenty one and twenty. This is the twenty one days now yeah. after the seventh day. And then we're assuming at this point they've they're still in the house, but they haven't paid. Yep. Yeah. And you probably know <coughs> the reasons for it. Hopefully, um, maybe you've been given an excuse. Maybe you've been given the real reason, but you'll know that they haven't mm. paid. Or maybe you just haven't heard from them. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, just to clarify, the reason we say twenty one in twenty one. So seven in seven is seven contacts, and then you uh, serve the notice of intention. 21 in 21 refers to a section 21, mm -hmm. which the notice of intention says, in the next 21 days, i.e. 28 days total, capped and one calendar a month, we will serve a section 21, which will get us possession back. Now, technically, it might be a section eight, it might be other things as well, but 
7721 to 21 sounds good on our, you know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a nice, nice bit of thing. and everybody in our office knows what they're doing. We're kicking you out, we're, we're getting possession back um, within a calendar month. Mm -hmm. um, balancing persistence with compassion. That's what uh, this part of the process is, overarching sort of title is, isn't it? Um, when calling that tenant, it's very important to be clear while you're talking. This is something that I've yeah. noticed is um, our team that collects uh, arrears, headed by Emma, uh, we often joke that if you could bottle what Emma does and sell it, you'd be, you know, uh, that, 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 that essence. Um, and it's the way that she asks. She's quite often you will get a bit of an excuse, a bit of a story, and that's where you've got to be compassionate and you've got to listen to it and work out whether it's true and the elements of truth. You know, if they, if they haven't got money, you can't collect money that they don't yeah. exist, but it's, you know, I'm going to get a new job, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Okay, right, I've made a note of all those details. We've got a payment plan. Being consistent, the follow up. I've, yeah, I've often heard her say, well, okay, so <clears throat> I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. What can you pay today Correct. to give the landlord some peace of mind? Yes. Um, because that's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. And if they said, on the 12th, I'll have the money, call on the 12th and say, mm. you said you'd have the money. And that's what I mean by being consistent and actually following through. It's quite a uh, um, process to track it and keep keep everything tight so that the other person, the other tenant at the other end of the, of the, of the process understands that um, Yeah. Uh, yeah, Emma's, be, being Emma's job is to make them feel like she's their friend. Yep. But really, she's not. Oh, she's trying to get. Yeah, but, she's working for for, yeah. for our landlords. <clears throat> now, there's something else that's a sort of a um, a universal truth behind all of this, and that is when we take on a tenant, and we will always do an affordability check. Now, they should be able to afford this mm -hmm. uh, this property. Now. If they've lost their job, that's a different thing, but maybe they're entitled to some benefits and we can signpost them to get to those. But out of all of the bills that a tenant should be paying and prioritising, the roof over the head is number one. Mm. And that's a little bit of a, a, a script that we have. You can imagine it, you know, it doesn't have that person just giving you it there, that's it. You know, this is, this is bill number one, this is the roof over your head. After that, you should probably get some food for you and your kids and then take it from there, yeah? yeah. That, that, so, so if you point that out to a tenant, um, it's totally true that around Christmas time, arrears go up. People prioritise buying presents, for example. Cool. Um, so, you know, to avoid this, you have that conversation and say, look, you really need to prioritise because otherwise, and you know, we're on day 10 or whatever, we've served you the section, uh, the, the, the notice of intention. The section 21 is going to come. Uh, we've had three phone calls and you've told me on this date, this date, this date, you've let me down on this day. I need to reiterate again that I need some payment today and I need to know when the rest is coming and if mm. it doesn't fall, it's not forthcoming on the 28th day, there'll be section 21 and that might hurt your credit record, etc, etc. So make it serious to them. Compassionate, yes. It's important yes. to do that in case it goes to court as well. And make notes yeah. of all of these things All documented. Well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is all documented on our, um, you call it our, our letting system, but if you're a self-managing landlord, make a note in your day, in your day book, in your diary. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So look, the first phone call, you'll get people paying yeah. more often than not. Definitely. Uh, the seven and seven, any that left, it'll mop them up. That notice of intention, it really is the big one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the one where, at this point, you probably, 90% of the people, if they can pay, yeah. will have paid. Or they'll pay something or they'll with pay a promise something. to pay the balance. Yeah, and then you've got 21 more days to really um, press it home, make it important, follow people up. Maybe they're on holiday, maybe uh, they did have a, a, you know, a two-week gap in their employment or something's happened, but you've given them enough time to make good. Um, then it's over to the, mm -hmm. assuming, that hasn't got it. And I've, I've got to tell you, doing that process, running that process, you've already cut your arrears rate down by yeah. 90%. <clears throat> Most of the time, avoid what will be the next step in this. Absolutely. So um, this, is, this is a um, second to last step. And yeah, we, we rarely get here. Rarely. Yeah. I've done this, well, as a business, I think we've done this three or four times in the last year, you know, a thousand odd tenancies. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's not very, very rough, often, but very, that very is rare. Yep. taking legal action. Yep. Day 28. Step four. So this is mm -hmm. day 28. Um, we serve either a section 21 or a section eight. So we're, we're looking for possession <coughs> of the property back from the tenant and we're taking the legal process. Um, 
couple of bits of advice here, I guess, for landlords. It feels always, and this is something where uh, we as a business, sometimes you, you, you've noticed, you have to sort of push the landlord off the edge a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're reluctant to serve this notice. <clears throat> I would always personally do it myself. Um, yeah, you know, I've never not done this. When I say personally do it myself, the team do it, but I, I, would, I always authorise it and I make it a mental note to authorise it. Um, the reasons that landlords might hang back, one, the tenant's probably dangling the carrot of, <laughs> I'll, I'll pay, I will pay, I'm, I'm just going to pay, I'm just going to pay. It's like, okay, well, look, yeah. I understand. And sometimes gonna... it's emotional, it's, heart, it's pulling on the heartstrings, yeah, yeah. especially self-managing landlords, they have a bit of exactly. a relationship yep. with the tenant. So there it would be, <clears throat> I understand you say you can pay next Thursday, but the 28 days is up. It's policy, always use that nice word, it's policy to serve you the notice. I can always rescind it, but I need to put yeah. the, I need to, I need to, um, uh, protect myself and the asset and I need to serve you this notice. I'm sorry, here it is. So you've done it and then they know you're serious. The other couple of reasons in the back of a landlord's mind are it costs money to serve a section 21 mm -hmm. and it should cost money. Don't try and do it yourself. Get the, um, the, the, the solicitors. Yeah, you need legal advice. You need at, this le point. at this point, yeah. you need legal advice. Um, we've got a software that writes all of these things out. It puts the right dates in there. It puts all the right tenancy in. We always get a third party independent solicitor to check it over just in case. And occasionally they pick up on one or two little things. Um, you know, it is the case that you can spend all that money on uh, going to court and you know, on the tenancy agreement it says Dave Jones, but on the paperwork it says D Dave, Jones you know, David, or something yeah. or David. Yeah, <clears throat> and that isn't good enough. That will get it by some judges will say no. Yeah. So, so get every single thing checked. Now, when I say it costs money, that checking doesn't really cost money. Um, maybe 50, 50 to 75 pounds. But what they're going to do then is serve the section 21, actually give you the piece of paper and do it. Mm -hmm. We use, we're not legal, we're not legally uh, legal advisors as a letting agency. We are not the people and as a landlord. I would never do this. And actually, in fact, you're not allowed anymore to represent yourself. Um, go to go to court. So presumably you're going to have to get a solicitor involved to go to court, mm -hmm. and we do. So we would signpost our landlords to that solicitor. That solicitor would check all the paperwork so they know that if in a month's time, two months' time, whenever it gets to court, they've checked the paperwork. Now hopefully it won't get there, yeah. <clears throat> but we'll have a deal with a solicitor that deals with these kind of things all, all the time who will check the paperwork for you, serve the section 21, and they're the same solicitor that will provide the barrister that goes to court if it goes all the way through, and then you've got that continuity on the, yeah. uh, on the legal journey. So find that partner, we can sign, if you're one of our landlords, we'd signpost you to that solicitor. Um, we don't do it ourselves. No. We, 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 we won't go no. to court ourselves, you need, I've been in this position myself personally, um, now you can't talk, I haven't been there for a long time, but um, I think you can still go, but I wouldn't bother. Um, you've got a barrister, and I've been in this position where we were about to lose, and my barrister, our barrister, company barrister, um, appointed by our employer, um, said, hang on a moment, there's a, literally everybody just sat around a table for six or seven minutes whilst um, my barrister says, some case law, the judge turns around, he's got a book, uh, uh, yeah, two meters long books, picks it out, Awkward silence, well, not awkward for him, but he's just flicking through it. Yes, you're right, done, that was it. So I, I have no idea what that guy said or why or how. That's why you pay him. If, if, that's why you mm. pay him. And if, if, if um, I had been representing myself or not got a leak, there's no way we'd have no. won. It was about to be thrown out for that reason. So um, serving the notice uh, and getting it um, passed and checked by, by the legal team. Um, you give the notice and you're expecting at that point the tenant to pay. Still, this can all be avoided if, if, if you pay up, please, yeah, yeah. And, and, and please do. So um, if you have any questions or you want us to have a look, if you've got arrears yourself, if you want us to have a look at your portfolio, we have a, a, an arrears rescue service. Mm -hmm. um, I can talk you through that if you want to follow the link in the description where you're um, listening or watching this. Um, we can maybe help you. Hmm. There's some really good um, advice, tutorials, and even some downloads and guides on our website, forthelandlords.com. 
So if you um, want any more information, head over to there, go to the Learning Hub, you'll find more stuff there. And consider being a member too, because in the members area, you've got guides, downloads. Mm. Doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't cost you anything. If you are a landlord or you want to be, you really should be a member of ForTheLandlords.com, shouldn't you? Um, so that's it for today. Hopefully that's helped. Um, that revolutionised my landlord life in some, well, I'm just going to small part, but large part. My arrears rate was sky high by being consistent, compassionate, but consistent and having a set process. Seven contacts in the first seven days, serving a section 21 or eight in brackets um, within uh, those next 21 days, capping the entire arrears, arrears un under 28 days. It brought my arrears rate down to, 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 to negligent. In fact, right now, today, I've only got one tenant in arrears. So there we go. go. Yeah, personally. All right. Hopefully that helps. Thanks. Like, subscribe, like, share. All those things. All stuff. Thanks.